So we focus a lot on providing project preparation funding um, through grants, recoverable grants, sometimes through loans and equity instruments or convertible instruments. Then our, our core business requires us to put in senior debt into a project. We also have an instrument that is called BE equity, um, Black Economic Empowerment Equity. So in South Africa, we have a strategy that's called um, BE, Black Economic Empowerment. This requires that the um, parties that are previously disadvantaged, predominantly Black investors, are supported through loans where they can purchase equity into lucrative investment opportunities. There's a, a BRT strategy in South Africa where cities uh, started since 2009, started implementing BRT networks within municipalities. So DBSA is one of the institutions that have played a significant role in ensuring that the BRT strategies in various cities are implemented by financing the parties that are ordinarily not able to attract financing from commercial banks and other institutions. So the structure of the BRT in South Africa is such that you have an infrastructure or an asset owner who is the municipality, but the operator is a private sector. And in this instance, a private sector is a, a previously informal taxi operator. That private sector party needs to raise funding to purchase the buses in which they can operate under the operating contract with the municipality. So we have played a, a, a role in, in supporting those parties in acquiring funding to be able to purchase those buses. When the country adopted the BRT strategy, it, form, it came up with a, a piece of legislation that governs how that implementation should be done. How municipalities should finance and form the various companies that are involved within the, the entire system. Therefore, there's very little maneuver if I can put it that way, you can do in terms of structuring the BRT transaction. The contract between the municipality and the operator who in turn is the DBSA client is also centered around the National Land Transport Act, which is the legislation for implementation of BRTs. It, it then um, it follows a process of forming the, the various required companies for the implementation of the system. And then, then it signs, it enters into an agreement with the operating company. That agreement is then what then is then what DBSA uses or in finances uses to come up with a financeable structure. And in this instance, and all the instances we We've, um, we've been exposed to. The only instrument that we could apply is a loan facility because there's guaranteed cash flows on the other side. The risk that you have to take, you have to look at how that agreement between the municipality and the operator, how that agreement is structured, and then you see how best you can manage your risk under that agreement, and therefore what structure is best suitable to manage the risk that you're exposing yourself to. Because the operating company, who will be our borrower, is a previously informal taxi operator. They do not have the equity to contribute into the structure. So you end up with a 100% debt finance structure because you're dealing with the party that does not have the cash to contribute towards the capital requirements. But the, the mitigant against that risk of not having equity from the sponsor is the guaranteed cash flows from municipalities.
the city's role is that they will manage the entire operations of the business except for driving of the buses making sure that the bus is early it's clean it's at the right time at the right it's at the right place at the right time moving commuters from one place to another fair collection it systems patient management and 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 is the responsibility of the municipality so the support that the city provides is is that they break down the system and make sure that you don't back bog us you back bog yourself with scheduling of buses collecting of fares say managing security and stations and all of those things and the support then over and above they provide to this operating company is that which talks to the setting up of the actual company because you dealing with the previously fragmented industry players hundreds of them so now you have to assist them in forming an entity you have to assist them in negotiating the contracts amongst themselves as well as being able to enter into this contract with the municipality but that concession agreement is usually broken up in two parts where the initial 2 to 3 year period is to assist them stabilize and formulate themselves in a fashion that makes them capable to run the contract on their own in that process they setting up structures they making sure that they have the requisite experience they testing up the systems then they extend the contract into a longer term contract in terms of the the size of the loan we've done a range of about 35 to 50 million US dollars for the purchasing of buses and the duration is again guided by the concession agreement and the profile of the cash flows and the longest we we've, we've considered is exactly 12 years which is the length of the contract and one is that private sector participation that private sector participation for me is key in that you are dealing with an an industry a transport industry that already has private sector operators so in order for you to successfully implement the your system the brt system you need to have the private sector on board in one form or the other and those negotiations with the private sector are very important you need to bring them board for planning for implementation as well as for operations so their participation their experience is very key and it can add serious value in how the system is planned and managed the second one is integrating services to increase in efficiencies one of the biggest mistakes many cities do is run parallel services and not integrating the various transport systems so if one would pay attention and make sure that as they implement one form of a system it actually can talk to different systems commuters don't want to be jumping from one system to another it becomes more expensive it's time consuming and it's, it's very inefficient the third one is is the funding so how you manage government subsidies and fair collection it's also very important at the same time balancing the cost to the actual con- consumer which which is the the the, the passengers so the how how you how you come up with a funding model combining the, the different forms of, of financing that are available to you is also an area that needs to be paid attention to lastly managing that private sector domination because in many cities in urban areas private sector when i say private sector i mean informal operators they dominate the space they operate they more agile they operate anywhere anyhow and they usually more available to the commuters though they are less efficient but they are more, they are they are more available and commuters choose them because when they want to access transport they are the most available form of transport 
and therefore they dominate the environment. So you need to manage that carefully.